All right, music fans, uh, welcome back. It is Dave, the Real Music Observer, observing real music in real time for real people, just like you and just like me. Uh, well, a little over a week ago, uh, a mutiny happened uh, on the uh, good ship Chicago as uh, two members uh, decided to say bye-bye uh, almost simultaneously. In fact, we learned later on that uh, their decision was made uh, together, uh, talking about Triz and Bowden, the drummer, and uh, Jeff Coffey, the singer and bass player, both of whom decided to call it quits uh, due to the fact that the band really tours way too much. That's the bottom line. Uh, they tour and uh, they have misstated the amount of time they are on the road. Their website is incorrect. I've done a video about that. and. Uh, Jeff Coffey actually did a little Facebook chat last night, which I tuned in for uh, for a little while, and he confirmed that uh, my video was correct. Uh, 270 days, uh, a lot more days than 150. Uh, so my question is, uh, can this guy, Neil Donnell, uh, save Chicago? He is the guy who uh, was picked. He is the most recorded voice in Canada. Uh, he was in a group called Brass Transit. He's an interesting fellow because he has quite a vocal range. He does the baritone stuff and he does the tenor stuff, but I'm pretty sure they're going to rely on him just to do the tenor stuff. Now, if you missed my other Chicago videos, I want to make it clear that I think Chicago has decided to pretty much abandon uh, any kind of attempt to replicate Peter Cetera at this point. Uh, Donnell brings a lot to the table. He's very talented, and I'm not diminishing his vocal skills. In fact, uh, vocally, he might be the strongest guy of any vocalist that's ever been in the band. I know that's a, a big statement, uh, but does that mean it fits what they need to be done? And I would say no. Uh, you know, look, Jason Sheff was brought in to sound like Peter Cetera. Uh, he definitely had his own sound and his own style, but especially early on, uh, Jason Sheff had a very generic sounding tenor where he could really emulate uh, what Peter Cetera was doing, the breathing, the inflection, uh, pausing and holding those notes like Peter did, uh, that whole broken jaw thing, which Again, Robert Lamb said it was just about impossible to find anybody who was going to sound like Peter, and I think Jason, in hindsight, was a really good move. Uh, it worked for 30 years, and Jason, of course, wanted to spend time uh, with his family. I gave him a bit of grief uh, last year or the year before about the way he exited the band. I think, uh, in hindsight, again, Jeff Coffey and Triz M. Bowden had the right idea. Just pull the plug be honest, get out, um, say what you need to say, uh, and, you know, move on with your life. Uh, the stringing out part was the part I didn't like a whole lot as a fan. Just tell us the truth, let us know. It shouldn't take this long. And it might have been Chicago that was, um, you know, cooking the books as far as what we knew and what we didn't know. Uh, but the point, again, going back to Neil Donnell, uh, Neil does not have... Uh, any sort of resemblance uh, vocally to Peter Cetera, uh, Jason Sheff, or Jeff Coffey for that matter. Uh, he sings high very well, uh, but you know, you close your eyes and you're hearing, it's, it's one thing to hear a guy who can do tenor, okay, who can, who can hit it and do it, which Donnell will kill it. Um, but it's another thing to kind of imagine those songs the way you heard them. And this is a big departure from the way those songs were produced and recorded uh, and the voice that is on those songs. Uh, this is just too far away for me as a fan to know if it's going to work. Now again, uh, this is like bringing in a guy who can play first base and shortstop and the outfield and do anything. Uh, in the band, uh, although I don't know if he plays, I know he plays acoustic guitar, and they did have to hire a bass player. Uh, 
because again, the model had been tenor, bass, tenor, bass. Uh, I don't think they had time to audition uh, and get into all of that. I think they made a quick decision based on the fact that Neil had already performed with Chicago and he does a nice job. You can see the video on YouTube. I think it was back last June or July and uh, they were up in, I believe they're up in Canada and uh, Neil is from Toronto, I believe. And uh, again, he did a great job. It's kind of like when Arnell Pineda filled in. I actually think Arnell would have been a much closer match to Satera and Coffee and Chef than this guy Danelle. Uh, but we shall see. Maybe Robert Lamb isn't going to sing uh, any of the baritone stuff that was originally uh, sung by Terry Caff. Uh, maybe Lee Lochnane is going to stop singing Color My World and, uh, and they'll let Neil Danelle have a crack at it. Uh, who knows? Um, and of course, as far as the drumming, goes, uh, we all know that uh, Walfredo Reyes Jr. is moving over to drums, so that problem was solved. But uh, I, for one, as a hardcore fan, as somebody who recently saw the band with uh, Jeff Coffey in it and was hanging out with everybody, this is still kind of a, a mind-blowing thing that Chicago now has yet another lead vocalist. And uh, this is a make-or-break thing for Chicago. If uh, Danell isn't able to sort of steer the boat and uh, carry his weight and to make this work, I don't think Chicago goes on after uh, this year. They'll finish out all the dates they've got booked, and then they're going to reevaluate because, again, it's just you're just too far removed. It's like the fourth cousin, third, three, four, five times removed from the original, and it's just starting to sound a little bit weird. But we shall see. He may win me over live. Uh, I'm a big Jeff Coffey fan, Jason Chef fan, Peter Cetera fan. I liked all those guys. Uh, not necessarily in that order, but I liked them all. And uh, we'll see. We'll see how Neil does. For the Real Music Observer, I'm Dave, observing real music in real time. And we'll be back real soon with more real commentary. Stay tuned.